I remember one of my undergraduate professors told me, just choose a school and a field that you want to do research for your PhD, and everything else doesn't really matter because you'll be spending most of your days in the lab. Now I think back on this comment after two years of my grad school experience. It's just BS, in my opinion. Sorry, but not sorry. Hello all, welcome back to my channel. I'm a former biomedical engineering grad student and I'm now working in a clinical product processing lab in a hospital. In this channel, I share my academics, career, and life here in the US. Thinking back on this comment from my undergraduate professor, to some level of truth, I would agree that you would be spending most of your days in the lab slash dungeon if your lab doesn't even have windows, but everything else doesn't matter. It's just completely untrue and misleading because everything else, such as the location of your school, your program advisors, the lab facility, and what career resources your program provides for the future graduates matter. In fact, they matter a lot. So in today's video, I want to talk about how I would have done my grad school differently, what critical conditions I have overlooked, what are the time and money costing mistakes to avoid. Although everything in this video is my personal opinion, I just hope that it provides a different side of view that may be helpful before or even during your grad school application journey. Now let's get right to it. I think I've never mentioned this in my other BME video series, so I directly applied to BME PhD programs right after my undergraduate degree in chemistry. But later on, I just decided to go for a master's degree. More on why I dropped out of the PhD program maybe another time. But with this background out of the way, let me get to my very first point, and that is why do I even want to get a PhD degree? How I thought about this question back then was pretty shallow, I would admit that. I just thought that getting a PhD degree will help me advance in my career, open doors to better job opportunities, and give me the doctor credential to make myself and my family proud. Don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to say that these reasons are not valid. I'm just trying to say that in my own case, I figured that I needed a much deeper belief and reasoning such as genuine curiosity and an excessive amount of passion to study and research the subject of my interest in order to succeed in this path. Even though I had a certain level of interest and passion in the BME field, otherwise I wouldn't even consider it to begin with. It's just that without a deep-rooted why I should even devote five or more years of my life to this, I just feel that I don't have a solid internal support system to help me get through tough and stressful times. It also took me some time to learn and accept that no shame, no blame. It's just like that saying, right? What's harder than learning from the mystic is not learning from the mystic. Now I learned and moved on with it. I think it's pretty common that most people won't ask the person whom they dated just three times to marry them. Okay, for most people. Although this scenario may not be the most appropriate analogy, I would say it's similar to committing to a PhD program, at least for me. And this leads to my next point, which is I should have tested the water before committing to it. Usually it takes about five or more years to graduate from a PhD program. And one of my biggest regrets about grad school is that I think it's the right path for me and I should commit to it before a thorough analysis to confirm that it is indeed the right path for me and that I am ready for it. One pro tip I learned from my current young colleagues is that a lot of them just graduated with a bachelor's degree and decided to get some real world experience first. And there are two key advantages to that. First is that you will get a general sense of whether you like the line of work or not, and maybe figure out a more specific area you want to uh, further your education in. Second. Many of my young colleagues plan to become a medical doctor, and med schools value real work experience a lot. Another pro tip if you want to test out if a PhD program is for you, I actually just found this out recently too, that you can apply to be a research technician or any other relevant uh, technician title positions in a lab that you are or may be interested in. So in this case, you will directly work with PhD students and the principal investigator or PI. 
If I were to find this out earlier, I'm pretty sure I would have had a much better picture of how a PhD student's day-to-day -day life is if I am truly passionate about this lifestyle and the study. And believe it or not, when I had a job interview with one of the PhD students in a BME lab, he told me that you'll have a much better chance of being accepted to the PhD program under this PI because compared to the external applicants, you are already well trained for this specific lab. In order to get this position, usually a relevant bachelor's degree, good grades, and some projects or maybe experience in undergrad are more than enough for you to get such a position, even in a highly productive lab. Earlier, I mentioned that your PI, your team, lab facilities, and school resources are so critical for one's success in a PhD program. If you have decided a PhD program is the right path for you, I would suggest uh, to try to visit the lab and meet everyone if you can. Usually, if the PI thinks that you are a good fit, um, they will usually try their best to reimburse you for this expense because they want you to work for them. I mean, if you'll be working with these people for the next five or plus years, from my past experience, I think it's extremely important to figure out if you have a good chance of getting along with them. Are they supportive? How are the lab equipments? Are they relatively up to date? I know this part is rather difficult to do because first, your potential PI may not be able to reimburse for your visit and the chance is definitely even slimmer if you reside outside the US. And second, even though it's better than completely virtual interaction, you won't be able to find out everything in just a few days visit, like my dating analogy earlier. If I could do this again, I would definitely choose to work in the lab as a technician first. I know I said in-person visit and interactions are so important, but also so difficult to do at the same time. I would say to my younger self that you are making a decision for your future five years. Nobody says it's going to be easy. It does require a lot of hard thinking and effort. Now it comes to my next key regret. Location matters. It actually matters a lot. Back then, I didn't really prioritize the location of my grad school because I thought I will deal with it later and it shouldn't matter too much if I acquired strong skills from grad school. Oh well, what can I say? Young and dumb. Although my grad school isn't too far away from a fast-growing biotech area in the neighboring state, and we are provided opportunities to attend conferences there, and our department actually does have some collaboration with some of the companies over there. The biotech environment in my area is very, very immature. The location of a grad school heavily impacts your academic, social, and professional experiences in three aspects. First is the internship and job opportunities. Choosing a grad school in a location with strong job market in your field can open up more opportunities such as internships and job placements, increasing your chances of landing a job after graduation. Many developed companies have professional internship training programs to recruit local students, and I'm pretty confident to say that these companies prefer to give return offers to great interns to whom they have already spent money and time training. A thriving biotech company can be such a boost for a BME student. Some of the biotech concentrated areas in the US include the Boston and Cambridge area, also known as Biotech Bay, the San Francisco Bay area is another major biotech hub in the US. Research Triangle Park, located in North Carolina, is a major biotech hub in the southeastern USA. Seattle, New York City are also home to a growing biotech industry. These are just some of the examples of the most biotech mature areas. There are also a bunch of other fast growing uh, biotech places where they have a strong hiring potential and provide a much lower cost of living. I will do a deeper dive into biotech companies later on. Please stay tuned for that. The second aspect is network. Location plays a vital role in building your professional network. Attending a grad school situated in the city with thriving industry in your field provides better networking opportunities with alumni, industrial leaders, and 
potential employers. And the last aspect, the location of your grad school can also affect your quality of life. Living in an area with access to cultural and recreational activities that align with your interest contributes to your overall happiness and well-being. So the above is the lessons I learned from my past graduate school experience. And just a high level recap here. First, I talked about why finding your why is so important because you'll have a strong internal system to help you get over tough times. I also talked about why testing the water is so crucial because committing five years of your life requires some hard thinking. Next, I talked about it would be really nice for you to visit the lab and meet your people. Last but not least, location matters because it helps you build your professional network and transit to a future career. I wish you all the best in your grad school journey. Feel free to leave a comment if you have other questions. Please like and subscribe if this video helps you in any way, and I will see you in the next one.